Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how to make some icy frozen bases for your miniatures. In this video, I'll show you some quick and easy techniques to make some icy bases for your miniatures, and you can use these techniques to make any sized base. Sometimes you'll want to do this after the miniature is fixed to the base, so I'll use two examples. One, this Fenrisian wolf, and then I'll use a second example, which is just a blank base. Alright, let's get started, and the first ingredient is the ground texture acrylic rough grey pumice by Vallejo, and this is such a good material to use. And then I've got this Citadel tool that we can apply it with, and I also use a little um, like coffee stirrer, little wooden stick, and this is great for the bases that don't have models on. You can get a lot more applied a lot quicker. The tool is really handy to get in close to like the little bits like the feet, whereas the wooden stick is great for spreading larger areas. So let's get started, and I'll just scoop some out. And first of all, we'll do the blank base. So I'll put a decent help in on the base there, and then I can use that coffee stirrer just to spread it across evenly. And you see you can get quite a lot here. If you're doing a bigger base, you might want to use like a, a lolly stick, but I just use this for all the different bases that I've done. And so just spread it along. You can get some nice ripples in there, some contours. If you want to give an effect like a windswept, snowy look, then you can just go in one direction and that works really well. And so pick out an area and notice I'm just leaving a little bit of the base without any of the material on it. Now we'll do the Fenrisian Wolf and here you can see I'm using the wider paddle end of this tool just to scoop some out. And then once I get it on the base, I can flip that tool around and use that smaller end. And that's going to help me push it in and have a bit more control when I get closer to like the feet and the different details of the model. Next is take some Citadel Technical Agrellon Earth. And this is a crackle paint and I use a scruffy old brush with some pretty stiff bristles and this is great to scoop some out but also gives me a bit of control to spread it around. Now the thicker you put this on the thicker and deeper those cracks are going to be so it's nice to have it thicker in some areas thinner in others and really just play around and experiment with it to see how much you want to put it on and how thick you want those cracks to be. So I want this to almost be like the edge of a lake something like that so I'm imagining the pumice that we've put on already is going to be like the ground and then this is where the water meets that ground so I want some cracks to show up for sure and then you can see doing the same on the wolf I'm using that brush just being extra careful now because you don't want to get any of this paint on the model if you do you're going to get a little bit of time not much but a little bit of time to get a wet brush and just wash it off and um, you can do that but best to just really take your time then once that dried, I took some base wraith bone paint and you could use white, but I wanted to have like almost a, a creamy look to it. So it wasn't so brilliant white. And so I've gone with wraith bone. I just put a coat of this all over. You can add a tiny bit of water to the wraith bone just to help it go into those cracks and also over all the uh, pumice material that we've used because there's so much surface area here with all the bumps. It really takes quite a lot of paint. So I'm just using a scruffy brush, quite large, and again wetting that paint down a bit so it really runs into all the different areas. And then just be careful again when you do it on the base that has a model fixed to it. And you can see just how slow it is doing it in this way when you compare it to doing it to just the base. Once that was completely dry, I took a mix of three parts contrast medium to one part talisar blue. And I mix it up in a bottle because I use this quite a lot. And so then I'm going to put one coat all over it. I'm not flooding it with paint, but like a generous amount because you want it to go in all the cracks because that's going to give you some definition. So really work it in there with that brush. And the same goes for that rougher area. You're going to need quite a lot of paint to work it in and get it all over it. So just take your time and make sure it's really covered well and then we'll leave that to dry. So much quicker doing it just on the bases, but you know there is gonna be a time when you have to fix that model to the base first. So I think doing it this way works just the same, but it's gonna be a lot slower and you have to be a lot more careful. We're gonna paint the rim next. So I take some layer Lothurn blue, and I love this color, it's really good. I take some white tack, pop that on the end of a thick brush or a kind of stick, and then that'll hold the base in place and then you can spin it and that'll be like a little turntable that's really going to help paint that rim nice and easily and I'm going to give it two coats so just go all the way around let it dry completely and then give a second coat to it and then that's going to give a nice solid color to work with later on 
You can do the same white tack with the model, but I just held on to the wolf and made sure I didn't have any wet paint on my fingers when I did it. But I think it would be better to use the white tack. The next stage, I took some white Vallejo 0.951. This is nice and bright. My very vegan makeup brush, which is perfect for dry brushing. And this is going to be the next stage now. So I load the brush up with some paint, not too much, just trying to catch the end of the bristles and then work it into some paper towel to get as much paint as I can off. And then I'm just going with even strokes all over the model. And then I'm going in one direction. Then I start going in circles, really catching it all, going carefully at first. So I make sure I know exactly how much paint is coming off that brush. And then when I'm confident, I can be a bit more rougher, a bit faster and start really working it in. And so I want to see some of that blue coming through. It's going to give a really nice effect. But I also want to dull down the rim of the base as well. So I dry brush all the way around. And this bit, you've got to be careful not to have too much paint on your brush because you don't want it to be like streaky. So I almost want it to be like you're peering through a block of ice almost. And so, yeah, keep working it. Going over a blue colour with a white dry brush can take some time. You might have to do it a couple of times. So just experiment with it. And um, yeah, having this bright white is really good though. And it really brings out all the definition from the pumice and also from those cracks too. And now we're on to the model that's on the base. And you can see this is a bit trickier now. So I keep it on the table and then I'm trying to move it around. I don't mind if I dry brush the feet a bit because that's going to help it all kind of blend in and work together. But it is going to be quite dark under there where I can't get in and dry brush as much. But an additional step you could do would be to take a smaller dry brush and work in there or use some Valhalla Blizzard, which is a snow effect by Citadel, and just put some of that in there. And that would work as well to cover it up. But this is the final stage now. And before I show you the reveal, I just thought it'd be cool to show you how I do my bases and how I did them for my Space Wolves army. And I did them all at the same time. And there's all different sizes. So just to show that the techniques will work on small bases, medium, and also those really large oval ones you use for the different vehicles. So the first step was to put all the materials on that pumice and the crackle paint. And then once I'd done that, I let it dry completely. And then I used the Wraithbone spray and this was so much quicker. It got this done in no time at all. Then I could take a flatter, larger brush and then my paint, I made this little holder just so I don't spill it, pop the paintbrush tube in there to keep it open. And then I just started to work my way through and this is a really quick process once you get going. And so doing it in big stages like this is really good. So if you can get ahead of yourself, it's a really good idea to do that. Then I've got this massive brush and I just use the same technique, but I use some cardboard to work the paint into the bristles and get some of it off. But the bristles are a bit too spread out. So I just tightened them up with a little cable tie and then that made for a perfect dry brush. And then that helped me get through this really quickly. So I went over the big and the small bases with this brush and yeah, it worked out really well. And here we go. Here are the models, the wolves all complete and really happy with how these turned out. Nice, simple techniques and got to do a whole army of them really quickly. And here you can see some examples of the different sizes. Here's one of the large round ones. And so nice snowy effect. And then that crackle as if it's meeting the edge of the water. And on this large one, I wanted a channel because I'm going to have some wolves jumping over it, which I think is going to look awesome. But once the bases are all done, then you can paint the miniatures separately and glue them on. And here you can see some of them put together for my Space Wolves army. And here's one of the Thunderwolf cavalry looking awesome. And I try to position them on the snow rather than the ice. And here you can see one of the, the wolf guard. And I also did some crows as well, which are going to play a good part. And yeah, so here's some close ups of that crackle. You can see thicker in some areas are going to give you some bigger cracks than others. But all up, really happy with the result for this. Here's the big one with the flyer, the storm wolf on. So it works for all the different sizes. And you can even put some Valhalla blizzard on top to give a snow effect. And that's just what I did here for Logan Grimmar and also added a magnet so I can use him both on a base and in his chariot. It's really great seeing a whole army with this theme, but you could certainly use it for other games like Frostgrave or Dungeons and Dragons as well. And definitely if you've got the chance, I would recommend doing them in a big batch because that's going to save you a lot of time. I hope the video was helpful and I hope this gave you an idea how you might like to paint your icy frozen bases for your miniatures. 
I'll put a list of all the links I use in the video in the description below so you know exactly what to get if you want to copy this recipe. And I'll also put some links of where you can get them and save up to 20% off the retail price. There'll be affiliate links, but they won't cost you anything extra. And by purchasing through those links, you support the channel and help me keep making these daily videos. So if you do decide to do that, thanks so much for your support. If you liked the video, then please give it a like down below and also subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. And then hit that notification bell to catch me here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. <laughs>